Stud do you here with chapter eight of my Dead Space Two No Damage run on uh, on Zealot difficulty. With chapter eight, we have crossed the uh, the more than halfway point to completing our journey together and the telling of the Dead Space Two story. Um, that's a nice little beat there with the uh, the necromorph on the outside of the window. So we're going to sit up in here for the fight because it just we're just kind of bringing them into a kill box. Otherwise, we'd have to fight multiple enemies at the same time if we were doing it outside. But by doing it in here, um, we can control the flow of battle better because we only have to face one enemy at a time. And since we have to be in here anyway to get the stuff out of this storage closet, might as well now there's a little a little scary beat coming up here which is a nice touch we'll get to it here in a second okay so we think we're done listen yep you're right makes you want to turn around and see something dropped in on you but nothing's there nice little jump scare yeah, that was one of those uh, uh, puckered butt cheeks or tightened butt cheeks, puckered butthole moments in my first playthrough. And that fucker snuck up on me and uh, got me the first couple, well, got me the first playthrough. Probably the first couple playthroughs because it's not like I memorized it on my first thru run through. So he probably got me a couple times. I like getting that guy because you don't have to get him. It's not sort of crucial because he just runs into the hole, but you can get, you know, 2,000 credits for hitting that shot. Now, here comes uh, a section where the sound design just makes this work. Like, it's just so good and terrifying that you can, you can build a fear, you can build terror just with sound so, um, I'm backtracking here because we're going to be heading to an area where there's a workbench so since we we scored some pretty good loot um, out of the node room and getting that ruby semiconductor from off of that uh, that junction box thing that we just zapped up telekinesis up so we're just going to backtrack real quick uh, cash that stuff out buy some more nodes so we can use it in the room where the bench is located but the room where the bench is located is one of the sort of the one of the best examples of just phenomenal sound design and how sound creates tension in this game there are a lot of places where it happens but i think this is one of the the best representations so we're going to get into that here in a couple in a few seconds I've opted to spell and spend all my money on ammo. Because we were pretty close to 10,000. So we could have waited, but uh, we were running low on ammo anyway. So it was a better investment. All right, get ready. Here it comes. So there's a boom, 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 boom. Okay, so that kind of sets us up. And then we're going to hit a crescendo here. Check it out. Well, that's not it. We have to get through this. Do you think, Ellie? I wish there was something to do in this room while we wait for her to do that bit.
All right, here we go. Check this out. Listen. Right there. Boom. You see? And then that happens. Oh, my freaking God. If you were holding on to a fart, you'd have lost it right there, man. That's just like... Oh. So first you get that first hit, and then it's machinery, and then you take a step, and then you get that other hit where it's actually an enemy. That is brilliant. That that scared the crap out of me the first couple times. Well, the first time at least. I was... Oh, man. My heart was in my throat. Trying to get my loot. So this is room at the bench, of course, which is why we, we backtracked and got a couple more nodes. The other thing about being in this room with all that sound of machinery in like the first playthrough is you don't know if more enemies are coming, right? So you think that a bench room would be safe, but clearly it wasn't because when we first got in here, we got attacked. So you're, you know, at least I was on edge concerned that something may come after me again, but I may not know it because of all the sounds of the machinery. So again, using sound to build tension Really good stuff. I just wanted out of here. I mean, now this is my, you know, multiple playthroughs. I'm doing this no damage run, so I know what's happening. I'm good. But in that first playthrough, man, I just want to get the hell out of this room. And then look at the trash. In. Look at the, the, the transition. We've transitioned into a zero gravity nice quiet zone from that um, sonic chaos that we just got out of. A chance to kind of clear our uh, sensory palettes after that sonic overload. But then they're going to crank it up again. This next part coming up, I had a really hard time with the enemies in this area because of the of the way it's laid out so there's just so much visual space and the enemy we're facing are the little um you know the babies with the tentacles so trying to find them in that giant space and they themselves are so tiny uh was a pain in the ass the first time through but they spawn in pretty much the same place always so once you've got it the you figured it out the first time you're good so it's just straight ahead in here but look at how tiny he is relative to the amount of space um available to us right and the first time what would happen is that you know they would shoot the projectile the projectile wouldn't be enough to kill but it would bump me into the spinning machinery and murder me. Twofer. Again, you see how far away they are, how tiny they are, and how big the space is. Yeah. That was a pain in the ass the first time. You know what's interesting, Strauss, um, in the long run, again, I'm assuming that you, dear watcher, have played the game, you know the story, and I'm not spoiling anything because I have made it clear multiple times now that y'all, you, should play this on your own, in the dark, all alone, with uh, surround sound headphones or theater system before watching any content. So back to Strauss. Strauss ends up becoming our enemy. And it's kind of interesting to be uh, sort of rewatching it and seeing that transition from him being friendly to him becoming lethal and not realizing it before it's too late. Like it's like it, they're t 
telegraphing it for us right now, but it's not obvious in the first playthrough, you know. But now it's like you can see it happening, and Ellie's in danger, and and I can feel that tension in myself already. But the first time, completely oblivious to what the hell was going on with Strauss. Sucks to be you. Let's go get our loot and get the hell out of here. I don't know why this area is so slow, because I've got the jetpack going, but I'm not moving particularly fast. And there's a lot faster way to do that. You just move up to the thing and then grab it while you're next to it and that's a lot faster than the crap that I'm doing. But you live you learn. Dude totally lost his grip. He just got punched in the face. All right, we're we're coming up to uh, towards the end of this chapter here. Again, this is an example of the, the wall coming down with Ellie, right? Because remember when we first encountered her back in Chapter th okay. 6, I think it was, she's like, you know, uh, people are a liability, and here she is clearly relieved that we're okay, even though she supposedly have no interest in our well-being. All right, so we're going to run out just to trigger um, the end of the chapter, the beginning of the new one, and we're going to come back and save, and then we're going to engage with the enemies. So um, I'm going to cut the commentary here. I want to thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next one later.